Hello there everyone, this is me Ethan here and welcome back to another movie review and boy do we have a movie to talk about today, Top Gun Maverick. Now almost a week ago I saw Top Gun Maverick on a Tuesday night, it was at a midnight showing and I was very tired and this week overall I've been very tired, I've been very busy, so obviously I haven't been able to get this review as soon as I would like to get it out. Darn, 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 darn. But finally I'll be talking about it today. And just a heads up, I ended up loving Top Gun Maverick. I'm just gonna let out right here. I absolutely love this film. It is an easy 10 out of 10 for me. Amazing. Now, let's get into the in-depth. So, to establish a little bit, I did just watch the original Top Gun two days prior to seeing it in theaters, which is pretty soon compared to most people who grew up in the 80s or 90s and watched this film like my parents did, and I thought it was honestly just an all right cheesy 80s almost sports action flick i thought some of the uh aerial shots and the dog fights were impressive but just a little bit hard to follow and i'll get into that a little bit later pretty basic story overall it had some good emotional beats and some great characters some decent writing the romance i was iffy on but overall it was an easy 7 out of 10 for me it was very enjoyable and i didn't mind it but the sequel to top gun i ended up enjoying so much more than I anticipated considering I didn't just love the original. I had been hearing good things about it. I was slightly skeptical. There was quite a bit of buzz around it and I've even gotten a ton of word of mouth about this movie before I even saw it. So that says something, but I I didn't know what I was getting into considering I didn't just love the original. I enjoyed it, but I did I just didn't know what I was going into for a legacy sequel that takes place 30 years after the original. I didn't know what was gonna happen, but I was excited regardless, and I ended up very much enjoying it. This is easily one of the best legacy sequels that I have ever seen, and it is top tier. It is up there with Creed, and it uses nostalgia in a meaningful and compelling fashion that continues the story in an impactful way that makes sense. I think overall this is just leaps and bounds ahead of the original. No hate towards the original, but I guess I should say spoiler warning here. Spoiler alert. So if you haven't seen the original Top Gun, spoiler warning, go away, shoo, enjoy your spoiler free world, go away. All right, this film, its entire groundwork is based in the past, and the I guess you could say the entire foundation for this film is based in the past and what happened in the original Top Gun with Goose. Obviously we all know Goose died, and um, he sort of hit the canopy as he was coming out and he died that way. And it works so well because there's so much nostalgia now at this point and so many people were emotional over Goose's death. Even I was a little bit emotional over Goose's death in the original. I didn't cry or anything, but it wasn't as impactful to me as it maybe was to somebody 30 years ago. But that impactful death from the original impacts what happens in this film. And if you are nostalgic for the original, you're going to absolutely love this new one. So the chemistry between Tom Cruise and Miles Teller, who plays Rooster, a new character who is actually Goose's death, the chemistry between them is just absolutely fantastic and you feel the tension between them over the death of Goose and that's pretty much the entire story of this is it's just Maverick trying to come to grips with his past and I think that's fantastic and just the chemistry between the two is amazing and like I said before if you enjoyed the original you are going to enjoy this chemistry and you are going to feel emotional over it even I felt emotional over it having just seen the original two days ago which maybe says something about me or it says something about the movie. Considering the title being Top Gun Maverick, I thought the name was a little bit unoriginal, but this film entirely focuses on Maverick just like the original, except the original obviously focused on Maverick and Goose's relationship, but here it focuses a little bit more on Maverick and Rooster's relationship. But here it, it's pretty much entirely for Maverick. Now I enjoyed Maverick in the first one, I thought Tom Cruise put on a really fun performance as the charismatic, cocky fly guy who took a lot of risks to sort of save this school and win this trophy and all this, and he, obviously he was a great, fun character, but here, he is significantly older, he is much more mature, and he is much more vulnerable, and the writing here I think is a lot better. I'm not saying the original writing for Maverick is bad necessarily, but this character is just so much more mature now and in a better stage in his life that you can feel his emotions. I guess you could say he feels a little bit more like a real character than a movie character because we've seen the cocky fly guy tons and tons and tons of times in science fiction and a lot of action movies but here he feels like that sort of mold for that character breaks free 
free and you get to see more of him. Now with that being said, we do get time with Rooster and we do get time with all the other extra characters and all the extra pilots. And I think the side characters are maybe even a little bit better here. They're fun, they're enjoyable, they don't come off as annoying or anything like that, except for Glenn Powell's character who is like the bully character similar to Val Kimmer's Iceman, and I think he actually put on a pretty fun performance, and I think he was a little bit more useful here than Val Kimmer's performance in the original Top Gun as he helps out in that third act, as all of you know, and I think he just helped out the story a lot more than Iceman, in my opinion, and I thought the little tension between him and Goose every now and then was pretty fun, obviously. Now, speaking of Val Kimmer, he does return for a brief, pretty heartfelt cameo, and I know Val Kimmer's had quite a few health problems within the past few years, so whenever I heard that he was returning to this film, I was very skeptical to see what they would do, because I was hoping it wouldn't just be, um like older footage and pictures, kind of like what we saw in the trailers. I was hoping there'd be some way they could use him and progress his character from the original, and I think they did fantastic with him. Obviously, he has a very hard time speaking, so he just types up what he's saying to Maverick on his computer, and most of the time, the dialogue between them is through texting, which... I don't know, doesn't feel very 80s, this entire film doesn't feel super duper 80s obviously, but I found that just kind of interesting how they texted for most of the movie and then whenever they finally meet, they do talk and then obviously eventually he does have his funeral, which like I said before, if you're nostalgic for the original, you're going to tear up for this moment, it is a very, very sad scene and I think they paid respect to Iceman in a respectful way, and I think they overall used Val Kimmer in the best way possible to be respectful to his health conditions, and I think they did a really overall good job with his character. Now, on to my favorite aspect of this film. It has to be everything in the sky. All the dogfights, all the missions, all the practice rounds, they are breathtaking. I've heard so many people say this, but it is 100% true. This movie is what movie theaters are made for. Very, very exciting. And it is immersive. It's breathtaking. See this in IMAX or Cinemark XD or whatever premium format you can with the biggest screen possible and the best speakers you can possibly get because whenever you feel those jets rumbling in that opening scene um, where Maverick does that test flight, oh, it, it's, it's beautiful. It's amazing. It's one of the best theater experiences I've ever had. And I didn't have anybody that was annoying with their phone on or anything throughout the movie. I did have one guy who was wearing a little bit too much cologne, and that kind of gave me a headache, but other than that, this was one of the best movie-going experiences I've ever had, and one of the best movies I have seen in a movie theater in a while. The original sort of sky fights or aerial scenes I thought were pretty revolutionary for the time for in the 80s, but they were a little bit harder to follow for me personally. In the original, it's more about a bunch of guys trying to win a trophy and trying to complete certain little things, so it's just a little bit harder to follow. There's not really a set mission or a set goal, but here it is established within like the first 30 minutes with all the young pilots, what they're doing, how long they have to do it, and how hard it is going to be. The stakes are incredibly high in this film, and that entire, and that entire third act is just chef's kiss. It is so good. It'll have you on the edge of your seat for the entirety of that third act. It is so good. You do not know what is going to happen. You, you just don't. They take some turns and you think something's going to happen and it doesn't. And it takes some turns and you think something's going to happen and it is. So you just don't know what you're getting yourself into with that third act. And I certainly didn't either and I absolutely loved it. Awesome! Now the mission here, it's pretty basic. It's basically the Death Star Trench run from Star Wars A New Hope. Nothing too crazy except this one is shot way, way better obviously. And I just found it incredibly entertaining, incredibly exhilarating and just awesome all around. There's something just so refreshing about seeing a modern blockbuster that doesn't feel like it's behind a green or a blue backdrop with a bunch of fake CGI stuff. Obviously, they've had some technological improvements within the past 30 years, so I'm sure they use CGI in some places here and there, but I didn't really notice it. It all feels very real. There are plenty of behind the scenes footage already out for this film showing like the actors and actresses like 
actually in these F-18 fighter jets, and it is really, really cool to see. It's cool to see because it's cool in the movie, and it's cool in real life. You know someone could actually do this, and I think that is wonderful. The score is done by Hans Zimmer, which I absolutely love Hans Zimmer. I'm a huge fan of Dune, and many many of his movies that he's worked on and I, f I found the soundtrack to um or the score i should say to just be all right i wasn't like blown away by it certainly helped build the tension during a lot of scenes and for the soundtrack i was sur I, I was just really surprised that they didn't use take my breath away over and over again and the use of the original soundtrack in this film is very very tame they're very calm with it they're not like the original one where they're playing danger zone every single 15 minutes they only use it for the opening scene which is exactly like the opening of the original which I absolutely love that I mean it had the same opening the same text the same font even even the same like scenes where it has the sunrise in the morning and you see all the other jets it almost looks frame for frame like the exact original film except this time the resolution is like way higher obviously and it looks slightly better but if you showed somebody those two intro scenes it'd be hard to tell the difference and I actually really like that I love that they played Danger Zone in the beginning that's a great little nostalgic bit just to get you running into the film just getting you back into that mood of Top Gun hearing Danger Zone again just an iconic song but they didn't use it again after that and I actually kind of appreciate that they could have totally put Danger Zone in a lot more for nostalgia, but they didn't, and I'm just surprised they didn't use Take My Breath Away again. Now, there are some original songs, one from One Direction and one from Lady Gaga, I believe, and both of those were really solid. The one from One Direction, or no, not One Direction, is it like One Republic or something? I can't remember what the artist's name is. Shoot. But anyways, they did the song for, um the beach scene instead of playing with the boys like in the original one and the Lady Gaga song was played for the credits and I thought both of them were pretty good and they worked for the film. I'm happy that they didn't try and just replicate the original in terms of music which I very much appreciated. It feels like modern music from today for a modern version of Top Gun. Jennifer Connelly plays the love interest this time and I thought she was a lot better than um I can't remember her name but the original love interest in Top Gun. I found the original romance just to be a little bit unrealistic and Jennifer Connelly's performance she feels like a real person playing Penny something uh, there's a couple name drops for Penny in the original so I, I didn't catch that at first so whenever I watched them like who, who is Jennifer Connelly playing and why does Maverick know her so well and I, I eventually figured out it was one of the uh, chief's daughters that he apparently knew at the time in the original but that was a little bit confusing if you didn't pay attention to every single um, piece of dialogue in the original Top Gun before seeing Top Gun Maverick you may be a little bit confused with that at least I was but I thought the romance between her and Maverick was much more realistic they felt like real people a lot more and um, overall I just I thought the romance was better and I, I keep saying this a lot but everybody in this film feels like a real person now you can take out Jennifer Connelly the film would not change that much, and that's pretty much my only gripe with this movie. You could take out Jennifer Connelly, and really nothing would change at all. And now the final thing I would like to point out is that the Navy is portrayed in a cool way. Most of the time the military is portrayed in like two very different ways. Either one, very vulnerable people who are hurt by their job, or two, the angry guys who are always in control like in superhero movies and stuff and it's just cool to see the military portrayed positively and as cool people because strong majority of the time the people in the navy are really cool people that actually really love their job and love what they do what they're doing they obviously know the risks but they know what they're doing is important it's fun and i i, I just feel like they were portrayed a lot better in here and they all felt like real characters. They didn't feel like movie characters. They feel like real people that you could see in real life, whether it was the younger generation of pilots or the middle-aged characters. They all felt real and like what real people would do, they do. They, they have realistic actions and realistic responses. So with that said, overall, I'm giving Top Gun Maverick a 10 out of 10. It is a sequel to a movie that I didn't love that I ended up 
loving. This is how you make a legacy sequel and you make it nostalgic, but also impactful, continuing the story in an important way that makes sense with well-written characters, both from a younger cast and the original cast. The cast the cinematography, the story, the writing, the everything was all fantastic to me and I had hardly any problems with it. I haven't been this immersed in a film in a while, especially in the theaters, and I was shocked and astounded. Keep yourself entertained, go watch Top Gun Maverick for yourself, and as always, I will see you all in the next one. Bye and have a great day.